This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. We'll visit with John Brummett later in the program about President Trump's impending indictment, as well as Governor, former Governor Asa Hutchinson entering the presidential race. But first, let's catch up on about the last 24 hours in news activity related to capital business, starting with Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. On Monday, Governor Sanders and Senator Tom Cotton toured uh, a variety of places that have been struck hard by tornadoes across Arkansas. The governor and the state's junior senator are marshalling federal resources to combine with state resources to help those in need. In the state capitol, Senate Bill 495, the sentencing bill that is part of the governor's criminal justice reform package, passed the Senate on Monday. All Republicans voted yes. All Democrats voted no, except Senator Reginald Murdoch, Democrat of Mariana, who voted present. Also, the Senate advanced Senate Bill 549. That is the tax cut package that is also part of the governor's program and agreed to by state legislators. It will reduce the state's top income tax rate from 4.9% to 4.7% retroactively. Senate Bill 71, which is was in House state agencies on Monday, would basically end affirmative action at the state level. State governments and institutions of higher education would be prohibited from using education, hiring, and procurement practices dealing with gender and sex. That bill passed by the narrowest of margins in the House State Agencies Committee. Chairman Dwight Tosh had to cast the 11th vote to get the bill out of that panel. It now goes to the full House for consideration. It's got to go back to the Senate and go through the process again because an amendment was tacked on uh, in the House. Also, the State Agencies Committee in the House approved one constitutional amendment proposal. It's HJR 1006, led by Representative Robin Lundstrom, Republican of Elm Springs. There are a number of additional sponsors, Democrats and Republicans, on that bill. It would expand lottery proceeds scholarships for vocational and technical schools across the state. Currently, they are blocked from receiving those funds. If it is approved and sent out for voter consideration, it'll be on the 2024 ballot. You'll have a chance to vote that one up or down. When we come back, John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, talks Trump, ASA, the state legislature, those tornadoes, everything that's been happening over the last 72 to 96 hours in Arkansas. We're back with more after this. Talk Business and Politics Daily is brought to you by Wright Lindsay Jennings Law Firm, Impact Management Group, and these sponsors. We proudly deliver reliable, affordable, responsible power across Arkansas. But demand for electricity is strained by the elimination of sources we need for always-on reliability. And adding intermittents like wind and solar cannot replace workhorses like coal and natural gas that we all count on. Power must be balanced for your needs and our mission. Reliable, affordable, responsible. We're the electric cooperatives of Arkansas. Connection. It's the heart of what we do. It's why we work to better the communities where we live and work. It's why we're expanding to get people connected and create digital equity programs that support affordable internet and digital literacy. We're leaders for positive change. From the way we empower our people, clients, and communities to the way we care for our planet, we live our values every day. We're Cox Communications, and we're pleased to connect with you. Together we can create in Arkansas that places children and families at the very top of the agenda. We can create the type of Arkansas that we have always imagined. Arkansas Advocates as an organization is the clue that can put all those families' voices together. Joining me now, John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. John, good to be with you, and uh, thank you for your time today. We have had a um, you know horrible tragedy across Arkansas today, primarily in Little Rock. Obviously, the community of Wynn, other parts of the state, devastated by those Friday tornadoes. Uh, just first of all, you've been in Little Rock a long time. I've been in Little Rock a long time. This is amongst the worst that I've ever seen uh, in terms of tornado damage in this community. 
Yeah, one of the uh, TV people uh, Friday afternoon said this is uh, this is our worst fear. Uh, they just had heard about the the, uh, the tornado touching ground, but they said it's gone through the very heart of Little Rock, and it had. Uh, we, we've had, I remember late nineties, there was a tornado on the east side of town and we've had tornadoes and none of them uh, are, are, are anything less than frightful and tragic, but this is kind of the heart of Little Rock. You hit the big rock junction out there and you go up, hit Little Leewood, Rodney Perham on up into inner around Walnut Valley then up to Cantrell and then to Kingwood and then over to Camac Village and then up to the, 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 the Riverview homes and then across the river and then the North Little Rock and, and picking up speed maybe as it headed toward uh, Sherwood and, and, uh, and Cabot. That's, that's a long path. It was a wide path and it hit us hard and it hit us kind of in the heart of the city. I sat a Friday afternoon watching all the weather news, nothing really uh, uh, yet on the path except generally, and it just had a steady stream of, of, of occurrences of thought about people who may have been in that path. Uh, and I'm on, I'm on the text and I'm on the phone calling people. I didn't know I had as many friends or people uh, uh, that I regarded. Uh, uh, as I, as I did, but and so many of, and I'm sure it's your case, and so many people at Rock had 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 friends, loved ones, uh, associates that they that they were worried about and remain that worried about. Some of them got uh, nobody hurt that I knew, but some severe property damage. Uh, and and it's just, uh, I said uh, to Shayla, this is making my stomach hurt. This is so sad. And a couple of people on one of the stations, KTHV, a couple of other people had emotional moments. And that's, it was powerful. It's powerful and it's gonna be a long recovery and it's gonna affect all of us uh, in, in terms of the city getting back to the function it needs and we want for it. Yeah. Hearts go out to those who lost their lives or families of uh, those who lost their lives. There weren't as many fatalities as there could have been quite frankly. Uh, certainly your heart goes out to those that have had, you know, uh, that were injured and had as much property, uh, you know, that's going to displace them, um, like you discussed right there. And, and, and I think just to the point, you know, I've been around tornado damage communities before covering this stuff for, you know, a couple of decades. It's going to take months, if not longer, for some parts of the city to recover and um and certainly the community of win as well which was just leveled uh, up there um it just takes a long time people i think are generous in arkansas and i think we will see that outpouring of generosity in the weeks and months to come so um yes. all that said, we tend to be uh i'm sorry to interrupt but we tend to i tend to be uh little rock centric because this is where i live and it's the biggest city and it got hit in a tougher way than I can ever recall. And when high school blown down, the yeah. town of Wynn uh, widely uh, uh, demolished a town of 8,000 folks. Uh, so, so it's just uh, the proper perspective needs to be broad uh, and deep on the, on the human suffering that is taking place. Yeah, and I have been encouraged to see uh, a nice bipartisan uh, show of support between yeah. local and state officials, even legislative leaders across party lines have been out doing a lot of things in the community this past weekend. So it's a it's Let me just say, politics, politics, uh, I used to say in, a, in, a, in the United States, politics ends at the shore. Uh, I think in Arkansas, politics ends when the funnel cloud has hit your home. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's no, I mean, there are points to make, and I've heard people make them. Well, is Sarah Sanders going to reach out to Joe Biden and stand up to the federal, or is she going to stand, you know, try, that's, I hate even to repeat that, but you see that on social media and people have very combative, passionate, uh, inappropriately angry political expression anymore. But yeah, she's out there with the Democratic Legislative Assembly. She and a and a, and a left of center mayor of Little Rock working together. And I got nothing to say except uh, 
except way to go, way to be together on this, way to be on site, and good luck in leading us through this. And that's that's all anybody needs to say about it. Yep. Nothing. All right, turning our attention to uh, the routine of politics. It's actually not very routine, although it's happened a lot in uh, with Arkansas political figures. On Sunday, former Governor Asa Hutchinson announces he will run for president. Uh, Going to do a formal announcement later this month in uh, Bentonville, but he's on national news this weekend and says, I will be a candidate. This is not surprising to us. Mm-hmm. Assess where you see his potential lane, and why do you think Sunday was the day to make that announcement? Well, I'm going to have to, I'd like to take this for myself, but I'm going to have to quote on his lane some uh, commentary this morning from Jennifer Rubin, a blogger and columnist of some regard, uh, based at the Washington Post, who said Asa Hutchison has a bike lane. That's the way she put it. And I think that's pretty apropos, uh, particularly here on Kavanaugh in my neighborhood, where the city has tried to cram a bike lane onto the thoroughfare, onto the boulevard. Uh, it's danger. It's narrow in a bike lane. It's slower than the traffic. It can be dangerous, but a bike will get you to the destination. The cars will beat you unless they break down. See what I'm saying? So if Donald Trump breaks down on an indictment, Michael Pence breaks down over being uh, in, in matters of uh, division with Trump and being on the outs with Trump nation. If DeSantis breaks down because he got too uh, speedy in his, uh, in his sports car and, and couldn't take a curve, Nick, Nikki Haley, I don't believe she's got her car started yet. It, 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 a bike lane is a good metaphor. And Asa is a 70 plus guy who plays full court basketball and could probably pedal for a long time. So, Based on that, I think I think that's where I assess him. Most a car is surely going to beat him, but if they all break down, somebody on a bicycle can get there. And Asa is a, a good bicyclist, I suspect. So that's how uh, uh, I read that. I think today he advanced. Uh, his, I think he probably advanced his schedule on, on his announcement because his whole essence so far is the anti-Trump. He is the most visible national Republican figure who's just been uh, uh, consistently disapproving of Donald Trump as a politician, person, and leader. And he's waded into this incredible news cycle with uh, tornadoes uh, and, and a presidential indictment because he is today, and may only be today, but he's all over uh, the home pages of the internet for running for president on an anti-Trump message, and he's getting a lot of attention for a day. And so that's kind of well timed. It, it uh, with Trump's troubles, and here comes this guy who's consistently disapproved of him. May only have one percent, but he, unlike some others, has pulled the trigger. So I, at least for a day, it seems to be working for him to draw some attention. Uh, and identification to him and his candidacy. All right. The metaphor you described there almost sounded like tortoise in the hair there for a little bit. Well, it is. It exactly is. And I just, one reason it was on my mind is I spent the last hour doing a draft of a column. And I basically, that was my suggested headline for it. And uh, it is very much like that. And, uh, and here's what Asa will tell you. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, read today's conventional wisdom and tell me the way it is, okay. But you don't know what's going to happen. We've got a whole fluid drama to unfold out there. And he's in there. And uh, we, it, it sounds impractical to me, but as I say in this column, he got on, he got in an Arkansas political bike lane in 1984. Or was it 86 when he ran against? 86. Uh, yeah. It was 86. And he rode that bicycle until 2014, 30 years before he became governor of the state. So he's he's done this kind of thing before. He's not afraid uh, to go against the odds. He did get elected to Congress before he was governor. So He did get elected to Congress, but third district. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I know. It messed up my uh, my metaphor a little. 
Yeah. Okay. You still got time to revise that column. All right. Let's talk about. I don't the need to revise it. I just need to. Okay. I let's probably talk, did. I probably did. Okay. Let's okay. talk about the Trump indictment. Uh, yeah. It comes down on Thursday. We don't know what's in it. We know what the subject matter is likely to be, although it could go beyond that subject matter. We will probably not find out until Tuesday what's coming down uh, when he is uh, enters a plea and the charges are read against him. Uh, but that has not stopped Republicans from talking about uh, what they think of the system of justice and the lawsuit itself, or the indictment, I guess, itself. Um, I have an interview with uh, Republican Party of Arkansas Chairman Cody Hyland on Sunday, who said, who is a former U.S. prosecutor and prosecuting attorney, who says we we really need to wait and see what's in the indictment. Yet it's a lot of folks in the Republican Party are the ones talking, not as many Democrats. What's your assessment of the spin cycle on all this, and is there, has it already tainted the story beyond any repair in terms of when things come out? It could be as damaging as humanly possible, and it's just not going to flip some opinions. Uh, what's my examination of the spin cycle? It, yes, the Republicans rushing to condemn a prosecutor based on an indictment they've not read or seen and don't can't be sure of what's in. By the same token, the liberal Democrats are so excited and saying, you know, we got him this time. And this, this is, uh, and, and, and assuming that, okay, if you don't like what you're hearing superficially about hush, hush money to a porn star, if that doesn't uh, excite you, this is, this indictment is going to, uh, going to, it's 39 other counts or something, and uh, those are going to really be serious. Well, they don't know that either. We don't know anything uh, until we read the indictment. Uh, so this is uh, this is the cancer in our politics. People rush to preemptive, dishonest judgment, and in the, in 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 our current way we disseminate political information universally and recklessly. The opening definition of an issue tends to remain the definition of the issue. So this is this whole thing just doesn't impress me right now. I mean, that Donald Trump is under indictment and the first president to be indicted, well, it's a Democratic prosecutor uh, in Manhattan. We don't know what's in it. Trump, to me, seems to live as the personification of indictment. He, he's always under my indictment, whether he's under indictment from a grand jury in Manhattan or not. Uh, the political rhetoric uh, attending it is is the same old same old uh, predictable divisiveness, and and I just you know well let's let's visit again Tuesday and then maybe we can talk. Based on what all that we know now, this I must tell you this 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 draws me up short. I mean you have uh, hush money. Uh, here, here's what we know now, and I. I I think we don't. I think we know. This is about paying hush money to Stormy Daniels, and it's apparently about using business funds in a fraudulent way to route the money through Michael Cohen, a few hundred thousand dollars, some of which he passed on to her, some of which uh, was like a bonus for him, some of it was for some tax liability he might have. Four hundred and twenty thousand. I'm thinking this man has stolen millions as far as I'm concerned from Trump University to the to to his tax returns in terms of uh, uh, Trump I mean uh, in in terms of, of the way he does his taxes maybe I'm not saying it's all illegal but there's there's bigger money involved uh, in, in 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 Trump than a few hundred thousand dollars and I'm just I'm thinking we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tear this country apart and invite trouble in the street over that that's the way I see it right now. And the liberals are mad at me for seeing it that way. But Tuesday, maybe we'll know a little bit more about what we're talking about, me included. So let's, uh, let's size it up now as uh, uncertain and strange and dubious with the proviso that, we, that the judgment is based on something that based on unknown information. That's, uh, that's all. That's, but, but this, but that, an indictment of a former president strikes me as our third item, our third item of discussion. 
Um, that's uh, that's that's an unusual and unfortunate situation. <laughs> uh, fair point there. All right. So if um, none of the other things we had mentioned had happened, the indictment, which is unusual, and an Arkansas a politician running for governor or for president, which does not happen often, no, yeah. has happened before, mm -hmm. and the devastating tornado, we we would be full of uh, a calendar of items to talk about tax cuts, sentencing reform, and the fact that the balanced budget, the R Revenue Stabilization Act, and the potential end of a session are all right there in front of us and have been political topics of the last week. So I, I just get to throw you kind of a, a free-for-all question on that subject matter right there. What do you think of the sentencing reform? What do you think of the tax cuts? Maybe you can insight. The sentencing reform is uh, highly intricate. It, it has to do with a lot of uh, changes in the criminal code. It's, uh, it's uh, voluminous. And uh, whether you like it or not, uh, to put it in at the end of the session and say on Monday, we're going to be out of here by Friday. Let's pass this thing uh, because we got a, pre we got a, a preemptive uh, number of uh, uh, sponsors is not the best way to do business. The tax cut is what? 4.9 to 4.7 at the top rate. Uh, big whoop. Big whoop. That's what I say to that. Uh, and, and, and it's uh, it's less than less than Asa Hutchinson intended to cut the income tax by uh, because of mathematical uh, reality. And uh, what else? Uh, what else? We do? And, and ending this resolving to end this session by Friday with all of those things, plus the Revenue Stabilization Act to do. And that's the way that, that's not unusual about this session. There have been a lot of things unusual and horrible about this session, but I've seen so many of them and they set these arbitrary get out of town dates and they rushed to cram through the most important stuff at the very end when they spent the first six weeks, two months doing silly culture war nonsense, that's not unusual in the way these things are said to be hard to start and then hard to stop. And there's, a, there's usually a lot of technical errors made when you end that way. And then while people are waiting for some essential bill to get a technical amendment done at the end, that's a good time to bring up some of the bad culture war bills that hadn't been uh, addressed already. I've seen wildness at the end of these sessions, and uh, that may be what we're in for this week, very possibly. All right. Words to Watch by John Brummett. Uh, yes, column of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Appreciate we had a few we had a few subjects, didn't we, to talk about? Yes. It'd be nice All if right. some people would have spaced some of that out over you know a couple of weeks would make it a little bit more interesting. But hey, it's a cram packed, action packed day. All right, John Bermitt, thank you so much. Roby, I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Talk business and politics daily is brought to you by Wright Lindsay Jennings Law Firm, Capital Advisors Group, and these sponsors. One of the things that I really liked about UAMS College of Health Professions is that they set me up for success. I chose UAMS because I felt like it was a great place to work. My grandmother was diagnosed at UAMS for multiple myeloma and I felt like it would be a great way to pay back the place that helped my grandmother so much. And that's why I went in the healthcare field in the first place, is to help someone just like they've helped my grandmother. For your education and healthcare needs, choose UAMS. This is what we work for. The moments you live for. The joy. The heart. The wonder. At Entergy, we're dedicated to powering each moment. Today and for future generations. So we're leading the way with a cleaner, more reliable power grid to power every day. Because these moments matter. We power life. Entergy. That's all for today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time.